Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we'll begin, sir. I'd like to uh, thank you for this time. I'd also like to recognize retired Mesquite Police Chief Harmon Ivy, who's here with us tonight to see us and his lovely bride to see their son get an award. So, all right. All right, I want to, this the fourth quarter of 2018, I want to close out the year uh, and look at the overall crime stats for the last five years. Sort of a comparison. If you look in 2018, um, We've had a low of two murders back in 2016 and the highest nine in 2015. We had five last year. Uh, sexual assaults have been trending upward for fifth, from 15 to 16 to 17, uh, trended downwards to, to 56. We had uh, fewer offenses than, uh, than, than 2017 reported. Robberies that had trended up, they peaked in 2016 at 250. We ended up to 2018 at two, uh, 207. Aggravated assaults continued to increase from uh, the five-year trend all the way back in 14 each year that they've increased some with a total of 297, up seven from last year. Burglary, there's, we've had a lot of success since 90% of all reported crime in the city is a property crime. A burglary in 2014, we had 1,176 offenses reported. In 2018, only 740, and almost 400 offense difference there. It's a, it's a huge, huge dramatic uh, impact there on our overall property uh, crime rate particularly in the property crime section. Uh, theft trended downward, and uh, auto thefts, uh, even though they peaked in, uh, in 2015, they were up again in 17 and down for 2018. That number, 5741 of total reported uh, unif uh, part one offenses is a, just a 2%, right, a 2% decrease from 2017. Our clearance rates in the bottom there, you can see uh, the number of homicides we had were five. We, we cleared four, 80 percent clearance rate. We would compare that to the Texas clearance rate. The last numbers we could see for the Texas clearance rate was 2016 and 2017, the national clearance rate. So we uh, were higher than each of the clearance rates for every offense except for motor vehicle theft. We're below that. And um, we have an inordinate number of um, salvage yards in, in, in close proximity to the city, and many of our vehicles end up being crushed. They, they, they take parts off of them and they crush them, so we, we never get a chance to recover them. Uh, so uh, that's one of the reasons why the clearance rate for uh, motor vehicle theft is, is so low. Uh, the next is gunfire reports that's been on everyone's mind. We have three ways calls can come in as a delayed shooting, as a shooting in progress, or sounds of gunfire. I didn't include sounds of gunfire here because I didn't want the, the slide to be cluttered up, but there's, there were 900, over 900 sounds of gunfire calls called in, and over 600 of those were unable to, lo to locate anything. The sounds of gunfire can be anything from a car backfiring to fireworks. It's whatever the person says when they call in is how it gets classified. So out of the ones that we could actually do, do, we do, do, uh, do something about here, the delayed shootings and the shootings in progress, where we had good information, we ended up making uh, 28 arrests last year of people discharging firearms in the city for various crimes, some for aggravated assault, some for deadly conduct, some for discharge of firearm within certain municipalities with a population over 100,000. So each of those cases, uh, each of those calls that come in, even those sounds of gunfire, we try to collect evidence, show casings. Uh, if there's any damage, we document that and report. So it's something that we take serious because uh, we know it impacts the quality of life for folks. DWI. It's something that's important to us because of all the highways we have and the actual the number of motor vehicle fatalities that we've had in the last few years. And so our DWI stats, uh, if you look at the top right of that slide there, those are the number, our officers in the top arresting officers for DWI, Officer Marsak. He works the late night shift. He spends a lot of his shift um, targeting DWIs, target DWI enforcement. He has 69 arrests last year. Officer Christopherson, 28. Officer Wathen is actually our lead instructor. Last year he led the city, but this year he was more uh, uh, more of his time was taken up in training, training new recruit officers. He's also a field training officer and teaching at our academy. He's certified as our instructor who recertifies everybody in the standard field, field sobriety testing. Looking at crime for the city, you know, we uh, divide the city into quadrants. The northwest quadrant, which is beat one and two, everything north of I-30, you can see some of the crime and for the fourth quarter there. Robberies, were, we had a spike in robberies in, in one beat in the north part of the city. We'll talk about some of those there. Um, this one beat robber, the guy in the mask there on the right, he, he hit us three times. He hit the Motley Food Mart twice, 
and he hit the first stop on Gus Thomason Road. The same day he hit us on Gus Thomason at the first stop, he hit a subsequent burglary, uh, robbery down in Balt Springs, and he was caught. So they notified us that they had somebody in custody for robbing. He had a very distinctive mask. Investigator Burke, one of our robbery uh, major crimes detectives, went and interviewed him, uh, did what we call a down and out, bring him out and talk to him, and he, uh, he admitted to doing all three of our robberies as well. And so he was caught with the mask, that distinctive mask in his vehicle and the gun and everything. So we were able to clear those three robberies. Another one beat robbery. These suspects, uh, there were two of them. They hit us on the Gus Thomas Center. They hit the 7-0 Oats twice. Uh, when they were caught, the, the officers, the top officer, Frias, or Jacob Frias, he works late nights. He took the first report. Officer John took the second report. And Officer Wildman, he's one of our canine officers there in the middle. Uh, two hours after the original offense was called in, he, he spotted the vehicle to match the description, and they got, into a, they got into a chase with it, direct out. He had his dog there with him. He was able to track them and capture them. Those two young men, uh, uh, we were able to charge them with the three crimes we had here, but th they were also implicated in 13 other robberies across the Metroplex, other cities, targeting 7-Elevens, convenience stores, gas stations, and such. And uh, we talked to the FBI, and they're going to pick up the case and take it federal under the Hobbs Act. Share a success story for three beat. You know, we have the cameras, systems that we that we have out in place across the city, those mobile camera trailers. And this is one of our dispatchers, Tammy Thomas. So her job is to dispatch calls. But in between calls, she's in the dispatch console room in there, and she sees the cameras. So she was monitoring the cameras in, in between dispatch and calls. And she saw a suspicious a vehicle over at the 24-hour fitness near the Academy Sports. She alerted officers who were in the area because she saw the vehicle back in and some suspect get out. And, and he did... Um, a break into a vehicle there. She saw him, and so she was able to give the other responding officers uh, uh, directions and direct them to where he was and the vehicle and everything. And they got him stopped, and he cleared up numerous BMVs there. Those are the BMVs reports uh, for the for the uh, fourth quarter there, and this suspect was responsible for 12 of those. So really good job, uh, her going the extra mile and paying attention to things, even though it's outside of the scope of her her actual job duties. So very very dedicated. Uh, uh, employee there, Tammy. She was a uh, civilian of the year two years ago. That, that's why, because she, she goes above and beyond. We had an incident in, in Four Beat earlier uh, this year. It was um, a criminal, back in December, rather, a criminal mischief. That was, uh, we received a 911 call about a guy prowling around a yard. Responding officers couldn't find him, but they did find some vehicles damaged. <clears throat> At the end of all this uh, crime spree, this was a one night, one man crime spree. And investigator Odom here, Kobe Odom, was an investigating officer. He ended up going door to door and uh, talking to people and showing a, a picture. He was able to obtain a surveillance photo from somebody's home security system, and, and he was able to show that and get the suspect identified. This guy one night uh, damaged a vehicle on Violet Court, uh, stole an encore meter from Violet Court, stole an encore electric meter from Wedgwood Drive, broke into two vehicles, damaged two other vehicles trying to steal them, and uh, actually got in one and, 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 and stole it, and it, it died on him, and it was blocked in the alley there on Penrose. So uh, out of all that, Encore would not re would they refuse to prosecute the suspect for stealing the, the meters, which have been the most serious charges. But he is the officer. Uh, Investigator Odom was able to follow on him for a felony criminal mischief, a felony theft, and two burglars of his vehicle. So four crimes uh, he was charged with. And the suspect caused over $11,000 worth of damage in total that night. This is a new thing in our, in our pursuit of data-driven or being a data-driven organization, accurate, timely intelligence, accurate, accurate, timely information. When an officer logs into their mobile digital computer in the vehicle, this is what they'll see, this dashboard. The new part over here to the right are intel reports. So it's broken down as the city and the quadrants, the northwest division, northwest section, the northeast the section in, in the southeast. So wherever the officer works, they can look at their intelligence reports for the last, uh, last 14 days, the last two weeks. And we, we look at crime on a rolling 28-day schedule, and so break it up into 14 days each each reporting period. And so they also get to see what's trending, what's going on in the area. They can get to see the fuel reports, CAD is computer-assisted dispatch, the calls they've answered, the calls they've been assigned to, and then the case management over to the to the lower left. So this is a really uh, big deal for us. So the officers, we can go in, they can get do their squad meeting, do their roll call, get their assignments, go out, log in, and see everything that's happened. In their, in their beat, in their area, and actually all across the city when you look at the intel reports for the last 14 days. Five and six beats, the big crime down there was auto theft. <clears throat> we had 21 vehicles stolen and five beat, 19 were recovered. 
uh, six beat, had 14 vehicles stolen, 11 of those were recovered. The top recovery locations are 121 Grand Junction. That's the motel uh, over there off of uh, Military and Syene. And then uh, uh, the others there the, on Highway 80, Gross Road, and I-30, they're either apartment complexes or motel where we find a lot of the vehicles. One of the things I'd like to point out is down at the midway of the slide there, so the vigilant plate scan um, <clears throat> to develop suspects. I want to talk about that just for a second. The Vigilant is a system that we use. It's a software package where we, we sign up with a vendor and, uh, and they get uh, license plate hits. When we have our automated license plate readers, it logs information into there. Well, uh, about 90% of the data, when we have access to that, not just our data, but everybody's data who, who, who has a contract with Vigilant, 90% of the hits we get for stolen vehicles come from record drivers who drive apartment complexes and commercial areas and things. And so we get all that. We have access to all that data, too, by partnering with Vigilant and, 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 and signing up for their service. So it's uh, the Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association drives a plate scan vehicle. They've recovered over 100 vehicles for us that way as well. But we get most of our hits uh, not from patrol officers, but from, but from uh, vigilant and, and the, the commercial entries into that system. We also use special assignment and deploy officers into areas where there are high, uh, uh, numerous vehicles are recovered and where the numerous vehicles are stolen. We use that. We pass that information on to the to the patrol officers at the end of the day. These two guys are do a really good job for our, uh, Officer Offit and Officer Mull on our uh, stolen vehicle patrol. Uh, that's a crime that they take to heart and they go out and they follow. They're, they're patrol officers, not investigators, but they're the two that get assigned in their deployment and special assignments uh, looking for the stolen vehicles and the people who commit those crimes. 8B, it's in the southeast section. If you look at this concentration of crimes on the left of the map there, we had 29 burglary motor vehicles and seven home burglaries uh, in, in the, in the uh, fourth quarter there in um, well, based on the third quarter, we deployed in the fourth quarter, excuse me. And then, um, so from July 1st to October 15th, the, the majority of those crimes occurred. 60% of those vehicles that were burglarized were unlocked. And the only description we had was a young skinny male with a carrot top haircut. So if you look at the bottom of this slide here, that the different colored map there, that's a heat map, and it shows where the concentration of offenses are in a particular area in the time of day, the day of the week and the time of day where they occur so we can deploy our officers in a strategic manner. Uh, this this guy here, these guys were caught on video and in, uh, in one of our offenses. So we had a vehicle description. We entered that into the vigilant system, and they were stopped in Rockwall for a crime. One of those guys who was stopped in Rockwall and arrested, he gave information on guys who were hitting Mesquite. We followed up on that information and identified two people who committed six BMVs down in, 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 in 8B, and we arrested them on October 15th. So we do share information with other agencies. We develop information, and we pass it along. The LPR trailer they're deployed, uh, we like to use acronyms, that's the license plate recorder uh, trailer, and then the CIDs or Criminal Investigative Division. Okay, this is another uh, a good arrest here. Uh, Officer, Officer Quinn lives in the city. He was headed home on November 15th when there was a panic alarm activated at the South Galloway Food Mart, at 828 South Galloway. Even though he was off duty, he was in his police vehicle because he had take-home car. He was listening to the radio. He observed the vehicle leaving the location quickly. Uh, he, he made contact with dispatch and let him know the clerk advised he'd been robbed. And so he attempted to stop the vehicle at East Glen and Faith and P. Lucas, and, and, or, and he got in chase with him. They wrecked out at East Glen and Faith and P. Lucas, and they ran. Both occupants were apprehended. That vehicle was taken in a carjacking in Garland. They came straight down here and hit the South Galloway Food Mart. Neither one of those guys lived here in Mesquite. They lived in Garland, but they came down here to commit the robbery after they committed the carjacking. But being alert and uh, the value of the take-home car program for the officers who live here in the city, he could listen to the radio anytime he's out and about. And he was coming home from work. He's an SRO. He was coming home from work in an athletic event from, for MISD. Technical services. We have 37 positions in dispatch. We're down four uh, vacancies right now, but this is kind of a comparison for year to year uh, from uh, 17 to 18. We had a slight reduction. Now, I will, I'll say this comparison, but we did not have, we introduced Spillman, our new uh, CAD system, uh, computer assisted dispatch system, in, in August. It went online. So we don't have a full year of, CAD, uh, of Spillman data to compare. So it's not really uh, an apple to apple comparison. It's still more of an apple to orange, but we still wanted to show some of the numbers. We did have a decrease in emergency calls overall. Um, and then the, um, the, the, the call times total. Uh, calls for service that were generated, 122,000 police calls and 13,000 fire calls for 2018. 
The 9-1 ring times, the National Standard NINA, the National Emergency Number Association recommends 90% of all calls should be answered within 10 seconds. You can see the metric there we meet. We meet that 99.65% uh, 90, of the time we answer the call before in, in that 10 second time. So we're above the national standard there. The average ring time is, is six seconds. Property room in, in the jail, just a snapshot of some of the things they do. Uh, we had log more items into the property section. Uh, firearms, we recovered more firearms uh, this year, uh, 2018 than, 20, than 2017. And um, total alarms, we have a new person doing our alarms for the first time in many, many years. Uh, MISD is not the highest alarm offender. We have different businesses here. He established a good working relationship with MISD, and they've done a tremendous job of uh, tighten their alarms up at the schools. And so now these businesses here, we look at the number of incidents and he's working with them to get the maintenance complete on their system so that um, they don't get fined. The revenue of 132,000, that does not have the December data on there. So I wanna make sure that you know that. At this time, this slide was presented, there were 13, 19 full-time detention officers and two part-time and we were vacant two positions. Each of those positions have been filled. One was filled today. So we're, we're actually full in the jail. Staff support, this is another big number. They've done a tremendous job. Staff support is they run our SRO program, but they also run our, our personnel, HR side, if you will. The number of police applicants at each test, test in January, February, April, June, we tested 501 people on the civil service exam. Out of that, so who started the process and took the test actually, we hired 37 police officers. That's 7.39% of the people who applied actually ended up in a seat in the academy. And then of course in the academy we have some attrition there and in field training we have some attrition. So we end up with really about 5% about of the people who start the process will end up in a police car on their own after completing all the training. They also hired nine detention officers, one secretary, four clerks, and four dispatchers. They total, hired a total of 55 people. Each of those people, because they work in the police department, even though they're not all police officers, requires an extensive background investigation, home visits, uh, interviews, testing. They coordinate and oversee all of that. So they've done a tremendous job helping us close that gap, uh, the, we, the vacancies gap that we had in, in the years past. They've done a tremendous job. School resource officers. Now this is a this is a calendar year, not not school year. So this is the spring semester of 2018, 1718 uh, school year, and then the the fall semester of the 1819 school year. So it's two different school years here, but total in the middle schools, the SROs we have an SRO at each of the middle schools. So that's 10 officers in, in each of the 10 middle schools. They had 77 arrests and 135 reports made. Total of 277 incidents that they re incidents they responded to. The high school now we have. Two, uh, two uh, SROs at each of the five high schools. We have 10 SROs there that made a total of 82 arrests with 112 total reports and 307 incidents. Community policing. This is something, it, it's uh, good that Chief Ivey is here. This program, the community, the Citizen Police Academy started under his tenure as chief many years ago and they're still going strong. They just graduated the largest class ever, 54 people attended that class and they, uh, they had, a, they had a really good time, and now the Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association has 250 dues-paying members. They do so much work for us, the CPA Alumni Association. You're going to see them here in, all these, in a lot of these different uh, events we have. They had 32 tours conducted at the police headquarters here, <clears throat> 55 explore events where they took the kids. That, that there is the DWI walk, the walk like mad in support of... Um, the organ that mad and against joint driving. Eight classes were taught at high school students and uh, to high school students, and then uh, 25 elementary school visits where they read to kids and things like that. So our our uh, crime prevention unit with Officer Contreras and Officer Rowan do a great job. The Santa Cop was a huge success this year. The program has doubled, almost doubled in size over the last three years. Uh, there's sixty thousand dollars in donations. How much was spent there? The, the big number I want us to look at here is the number of, the number of families assisted. Over 360 families and over 1,000 children uh, were served through that program. It's a shame that it's really, I mean, that it's called the Santa Cop program because it's really a, the, the Mesquite Community 
uh, Christmas program. MISD is a great partner. The Citizens Police Academy is a great partner. Uh, lots of business partner with us. People here in the city partner with us. They buy the t-shirts. They support the program. You, the members of the council and the city manager staff, they, everybody supports the program. And it, 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 and we get the benefit of that as the police department. But everybody, it's really the Mesquite community rally around there to make that program grow. Uh, this year we did a different concept. Um, under the leadership of uh, Sergeant Mark Bradford and his, and his team, which is Tory Roan, Steve Contreras, and Eamon Lydon, Sergeant Eamon Lydon. They had a face painting booth set up, cookie decorating station, uh, games. Uh, Whataburger provide, was one of our sponsors provided breakfast. Uh, this is really neat. Officer Barnes here, he was a balloon artist in college, worked his way through college as a balloon artist, working at restaurants and such. And so he volunteered his time to come make balloon animals for the kids. Horn High School Orchestra was there, and you'll see here, uh, the upper right there, you see Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association volunteers, as always, at every event we have, and, and their tremendous support. This is what it looked like before we started passing out, uh, distributing the gifts there at the convention center. Um, all those bicycles, all those bags are full of gifts for kids. Those one, over 1,000 kids that were served were served right there in, in uh, that day. So it was a tremendous success. Uh, those, uh, the presentation, I'll... Prepare to take any questions, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Chief. I tell you what, it's uh, it's really encouraging f to hear all the great work that you guys do, and uh, I've said it before. And one thing about when people people going to come and they're going to do bad things. We've heard you say that too, but uh, I will say in Mesquite, a lot of times we get them. You get your man, and we appreciate that very much. Um, I'm very grateful for all that you're done in your leadership, and like I said. Chief, that's here before you, and all the men and women that wear the blue and mesquite. We're proud of you, and we appreciate you very much. Questions, comments, Council? Thank you, Mayor. And Chief, I'll just echo what the Mayor just said. Uh, your folks are doing a tremendous job of following up with uh, a lot of bad deeds that have been done here just recently, uh, and your folks are all over it. So I know all of us up here are very proud of you and your team. I had a couple of questions. Um, when a new officer finishes up their field training and are ready to be out on their own, uh, how long, uh, what's the policy in terms of how long they need to patrol before they could ever transfer to CID or SRO or other areas in the department? I'm just curious how long before they would be eligible to move into another role? The, uh, that policy recently changed. Uh, it had been three years. Uh, but that was policy was put in place before we started accepting lateral transfers. And so once we get lateral transfers, you're bringing in experienced people already. You want to capture some of that experience. So the, the policy was just changed to reflect that when they get off probation. So a lateral person gets off probation after a year and a, 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 new, a new hire off the street gets off probation after 18 months. Now the likelihood of one of those guys getting a job at that a specialized job is very, 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 very small. but. Um, for example, we just had someone who was an SRO for 14 years working for us in MISD when he was in the Balt Springs Police Department. So he came here and he, he did his he did his time, got on probation, and it would be foolish of us not to consider who did, somebody who did a great job creating an opportunity for him. And he was selected. I didn't give him anything. He he earned his position. And so yes, sir. So. To answer your question, it's one year for laterals and 18 months for rookies, and there's a reason why that that policy is different now. Okay. So one year for laterals and 18 months for rookies. Is that 18 months after they've completed their field training or from the date of hire? From the date of hire. They, they, that's when they get up probation, from their date of hire. And about how long is it again from hire date through academy to through field training, roughly? It's uh, about 44 weeks, and so it's just under a year. Okay. So, Next question I had was... Um, I've been to a few crime watch meetings lately. In fact, you were at one just recently where a number of residents uh, who are very pleased with, with what uh, your team are doing sometimes feel that perhaps some of our local businesses could step up a little bit more as well as in terms of preventing crime at their locations. And that's everything from petty crime to uh, an armed robbery or perhaps more violent crime. Uh, there was a general feeling, in fact, the mayor and I were just, were just at one in Rowland Hills, uh, Galloway area recently where uh, we both talked about in, in our roles of running a business with, with the public of, of how important sometimes it is to say, hey, we're not going to allow this here in our business. Um, I just wondered when we do have robberies or we have issues where our officers are, are out following up, and, and I know our community officers from time to time go help businesses come up with a plan uh, to prevent crime with their businesses. I was just curious, are we having conversations sometimes with 
businesses in terms of encouraging them, hey, you really need to have cameras, or you might even want to consider hiring a security guard if you're being hit over and over. I was just kind of curious how those conversations go, because it does seem like some of our businesses may have to do a little bit more if they're a constant target all the time. Yes, sir. There's a couple of things we're, we're, we do. First of all, uh, when the investigator follows up with them, if they don't have a security system, uh, they recommend that. We have our crime prevention officers. Officer Roan and Officer Contreras are both certified crime prevention officers, so they can go do a security survey uh, for the business and make recommendations. And that recommendation, if they follow those recommendations, they can also get a discount at, uh, on their business, on their insurance, their property insurance, or their insurance carrier. It's a, it's part of a state license program that if you meet these criteria, you can get a discount. So that, that, that's that, that's the two main thing. The investigators follow up with the business, and so does the uh, um, the crime prevention officers. We have had some conversations recently about what recommendations we can make as a whole. Uh, to and uh, uh, had those conversations with Mr. Kahili about uh, camera systems and types and, and, and what kind of different things we can recommend to businesses in general. Uh, we had a robbery here just yesterday. It's not in the quarterly report because it's not not in the last quarter, but uh, we were able to catch the guys today because of the quality of the cameras that the business had had a clear clear view of everything that those guys and, and, and their vehicle, and so we we're able to get it identified in a timely manner. So yes, uh, quality video is is, is a great great assistance to us in our investigative process. Some businesses, the system is so antiquated, they don't even know how to operate or download the video. So we have one guy, and we spent a lot of time going out and, and downloading those videos and trying to access systems that are not even on the market anymore. So those are kind of things we've been in conversations about. We'll be, we'll be preparing to make a recommendation at some point in the future, sir. Chief, I noticed recently after the, the issue with the poor woman at the Kroger parking lot that they had some security out there temporarily. Uh, I'm sure there's other businesses in different parts of town that may have some security. I don't necessarily see them all the time, but do we have some liaison with some of those businesses that do have armed or unarmed security from time to time? Yes, sir. Our, our, that's part of our, our, our pop sergeants, the, the, the district sergeants have a visit with those businesses in their area. That's one of the expectations of them. And the crime prevention officers do go visit with businesses. And when they do those security services, they can make recommendations uh, up to and including whether they should have security. Okay. Uh, that is all I have. Again, uh, very proud of what you and your team are doing, uh, your sworn officers, as well as all your civilian employees. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions for the chief? Chief, we appreciate it as always. Thanks for a great update. Thank you, sir. Thank you.